Okay, well then let's get started here. Go ahead, Joe, call the roll if you would please. Mr. Livingston? Here. Mr. Nath? He's here, but he's muted. Uh, here, sorry. Yep. Mr. Decalaw? Here. Mr. Lennon? I just saw Larry sign in here, so he may be I'm here. Muted. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. And then um, Ms. Cimaroli? Here. Mr. Tolmer is absent. And myself. All right, Dale. Okay. Um, first item on the agenda is adoption of minutes. Um, Joe uh, sent those out last week. Um, if any, I would take a motion to uh, motion a second for adoption of the June 29th, 2020 minutes. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. Seconded. Dick, in whatever order you want. Dick, Dick made the motion. Tim seconded. Any further discussion, corrections? All in favor of adopting the minutes, please, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Um, minutes of the July 27th, 2020 minutes. Um, take a motion and a second. A motion. Justine, okay. Second, this is Tim. Tim, second, okay. Any further discussion, corrections? All in favor of adopting, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, aye. Motion carries. Okay. Um, old business. Um, comprehensive plan, con uh, uh, comprehensive plan concept discussion. Um, just to just to kind of recap where we are um, last July in the July meeting um, we narrowed things down um, to um, looking at um, going forward with the uh, a new comprehensive plan over the next couple of years with kind of a phased approach and looking at pedestrian safety um, the other concepts that have been t discussed in the previous, over the previous five, six months, um, I, I will take a motion to table any further discussion on those. Let's talk about the, um, um, the co comprehensive plan and the safety issues, get kind of that kind of information, that kind of plan put together for budgeting issues for Joe and the, and the council this year. And then we can go back and, and um, look at look at the other concepts um, October, November, or November, December. November, December. Um, if that works. Um, so I take a motion to, to table the rest of the concept discussion until November. So moved. So I have a question. When does that put it? I mean, so the budget discussions with council starts when? In October? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we, we, we what, just to clarify, we, we can take the short term ones, the, the pedestrian safety and, and the co um, comprehensive plan initially. Get, get those discussions started now. And yeah. then we'll continue on with the other concepts um, end of this year, beginning part of next year. Okay. Okay. So I got a motion by Justine, was it? Yes. A motion I'll by Justine and seconded by? I'll second it. Yes. Okay. Um, any further discussion? No, oh, just to just to say that back to you, Dale. Okay. Concentration of priorities for this meeting, September, potentially October, is the two immediate items that we want to move on and get some budget specificity in front of the the commission or the uh, council. November, we'll circle back after we've got those requests in to pick up some of the other things. Is that a fair restatement? Yes. Okay, yes. I got you. Any further discussion questions? Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 
Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. So um, just kind of going back to our calendar that we, we our calendar schedule that we put that we put together last December. Um, we're in that third quarter looking at refinement of, of our priorities, the, the two priorities that for aforementioned. And then, you know, trying to get some, some ideas for budget stuff uh, put together. You know, hopefully Joe Cower can help us with some of this stuff and then um, move that stuff forward for the um, council and, and uh, the borough manager to, to look at and try and come up with some ideas for budgets and, and you know, come up with some money for, for next year for moving this stuff forward. Um, I just wanted to make sure that everybody's kind of on the same page. Um, so um, with that pedestrian safety and active transportation concepts, um, just to kind of update everybody, uh, Justine and I um, sat through a, um, a webinar, two webinars actually, back in July that talked about, the first one was July 2nd, kind of talked about pedestrian safety issues. And then the um, July, second one was July 14th and they talked about active transportation. My plan is to just kind of give a brief update of, of what was, what went on with these webinars, the kind of information that we got. And then um, we'll move on to, to try and talk about some of the, some of the issues with pedestrian safety. So um, Justine was nice enough to, to forward off the, um, uh, an email back on July 7th regarding the, the handouts and information from the, from the two webinars. Um, PennDOT was tech, uh, PennDOT, uh, local technical, local technical assistance program was the one that put it on. Um, and they basically, it's, um, uh, a, a program through PennDOT that, that helps with pedestrian safety. They put on um, workshops, newsletters. Um, they've got a, a website. Um, there's no cost to the municipality for uh, getting their assistance. Um, and they basically, this workshop that they had went through um, identifying, you know, safety issues and, and uh, safe walking routes pavement markings, um, doing crosswalk studies um, for uh, potential new crosswalks or existing crosswalks. Um, the signage, they went through all the signage requirements and the crosswalk re requirements. Um, they provided a crosswalk assessment form. Um, you know, they, they talked about what they can do for local municipalities although lo local munis municipalities have responsibility for crosswalks within their jurisdiction, jurisdiction with the exception of like state highways. And that's then PennDOT really has the, has the um, control over those. So it was a, it was a very informative um, workshop. Um, it was two hours long. And I learned more about crosswalks than I ever dreamed of and, and had more, you know, there was more information there and, and more to think about than just, you know, putting some paint on, on the pavement and, and calling it good. So um, before I move on to active, active transportation, Justine, do you want to say, add anything for the? Well, I do because I think one of the things that they were very upfront in the, in the beginning is that they do walkability scores. And there is a website called walkscore.com that you can actually find out the walkability of your street or your town. Now, fortunately for Bridgeville, their walkable score is 78 for walking and it's 47 for biking. Now, Thing is, is that when realtors look for housing for their particular clients or the clients themselves may go out there and look at a walkability score. So in effect, it is important. It may be more important to others than, than some. The other thing is, is that they did mention that the fatalities for pedestrians 
has increased to like 34% over from 2007 in fatalities. So I think that's important, especially if you look at the pedestrians in Bridgeville. A lot of them are dog walkers like myself. Others are the elderly that, that walk from Goodwill Villa to various places and children. So I think the pedestrian safety and crosswalks are very important and it needs to be um, identified what crosswalks are dangerous and what aren't. So, and the scores, oh, I'm sorry, Justine, real quick question. The scores that you just mentioned, is that something that, that this organization has determined or is it like a crowdsourced sort of thing? It's a crowdsource. Okay. All right. Well, what they do is they look at the amenities available. If I walk from my house, can I go to the grocery store? Yes. Can I walk to the post office? Yes. Can I walk to a restaurant? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's all included in that walkability score. So. so Dale, I have a question. You indicated that PennDOT uh, does pedestrian safety studies for the roads under their jurisdiction. So in Bridgeville, that would be what? Bank Street? And I guess Station, as well as Washington Avenue? Uh, I, you know, they, they, PennDOT's more worried about the state highways, the local. Well, that, those are state roads. Um, I, I, the impression I got was, you know, state roads being the divided highways or, or limited access road. I don't think so. Nobody walks on those. If they're talking about pedestrian st safety, they're talking about you know, if there's any road under their jurisdiction, and that's any state road, whether you define it as a highway or whatever, and certainly Bank Street and Washington Road both qualify in Bridgeville, and I would like to think that that's probably our number one and two streets, if you will, of concern for pedestrian yeah. safety. So I would tend to, so the obvious question is, when are they going to get their pedestrian safety studies done for Bank and Washington Road? Well, and th they were very... This um, the the um, local technical assistance program. They were very adamant that you know it's local municipalities are responsible for the local roads. You know, so, no, no, I get that, Dale. And those aren't local roads. What I'm talking about are not local roads. Those are state roads. Okay. I, I, now, I, Bower I, Hill is obviously a county road, and that would probably be close to the top of the list. I would think, and I haven't heard anybody, unless I missed it, to list the streets that we're most concerned about, but my thinking, those would be the top three. And, and that's a good question, Larry. I guess I don't have the answer for you. Presley Road's theirs as well, is it not? Yes. So is McLaughlin Run. Right. Oh, well, there you go. I mean, I, I think we need to press them to Top do the five. pedestrian <laughs> safety studies for those five roads. I mean, that'd be a great start. And I, I think Short Tears is also. Yes, he, you're, you're correct. Yeah, you're right. Yes. So Dale, uh, this uh, assistance, Dale, sorry, the program, is it like, hey, we'll put you on a list and when we get to you, we get to you? Or is it split the cost with the borough or is it the uh, you know, to do it? The, they, um, you can call, I could call them, Joe could call them, somebody from the borough could call them and get um, assistance from the local, uh, the, the technical assistance program. It's free to, free to municipalities. Um, I, I just presume that it's somebody from, uh, that holds an official position with the borough you know, would, would have to make that request for assistance. And, and so I'm gonna recommend that the, the uh the borough through the manager pen a letter to PennDOT and ask them to prepare pedestrian safety problems for those five streets as soon as possible. I mean, that's how you get that stuff done. Just send them right. a letter, tell them we want it done. I mean, I'm they, sure they've got the funding, you know. I mean, they've got what? the program, they've got the obligation. Okay. Um, they did provide documentation or questionnaires that you can fill out as you're sitting there at a crosswalk like Dewey and Bank Street, how many, what number of cars, how many pedestrians and so forth. Then you go and you compare it to the charts that they've established uh, for speed and so forth. And it determines 
what the crashability data could be and what the pedestrian fatalities could be. Um, so that the tools were part of that program. I don't know um, how in depth that would go, but at least it would give us a basic understanding. So, to me, this is no different than any other traffic study that PennDOT has to do from time to time. And I know they've got the guidance okay. and the guidelines and you know, the responsibility to perform those studies on those state roads, in my mind, does not fall on the local municipality. It falls on PennDOT. So if they okay. need to hire a consultant to go out and do traffic counts, uh, pedestrian counts, whatever it is that they do, that's their responsibility. And again, okay. you know, I think, you know, we're looking, I mean, it, this has been identified. You know, the beauty of this whole thing is this was uh, it sort of independently determined to be an issue uh, by the planning commission through this process that we went through. And it just so happens that there are five streets that when you think about it, are probably at the top of the list and they all happen to be pen dots. Right. So it makes sense to pen the letter and say, we want, we would like to have the study done as soon as possible. And frankly, the other beauty of that is it's no money out of our pocket. Right. Yeah. I was going to say we're <laughs> good, good, good from them taking the responsibility for it. Uh, doesn't nice of them us. to tell us this stuff is out there. Now let's take advantage <laughs> of it. <laughs> well, and, and so Dale, I asked this a minute ago and you might've answered it. I'm just looking past it, but the mitigation of whatever they find, presumably that's their responsibility as well, as long as it's their roads, but what sorts of stuff did they allude to? Cause you said it's not just repainting crosswalks. Is it, is it signage? Is like, what else is there that it's, it's, it's signage and it's, you know, the distance from the crosswalk to the, you know, the, the crosswalk sign and then the advanced warning crosswalk sign. It's, you know, the high vis crosswalk signs, the flashing crosswalk signs. I mean, there, there's a whole, I mean, it's the, the signage thing was a whole 15, 20 minute discussion because there's so many different kinds of signs and there's so many different ways to go. I mean, like um, if you've been over in, in Mount Lebanon, um, you know, through the, through on highway, uh, 19, mm. you know, they got the, you push the button and it's got the flashing uh, lights that light up that indicate, you know, there's a pedestrian in the crosswalk, you know, that type of thing to, you know, the, the signs that have the LEDs around the outer edges that just flash uh, as opposed to just a crosswalk, you know, the, the, the fluorescent crosswalk sign and, you know, there's, you know, four or five different types of roadway markings that you can use. Um, you know, it's, it's all about, you know, sight lines and, and um, from intersections and, and, you know, that type of thing. So, you know, it was a, it was a very in-depth type course. Yeah, I've not studied it, but typically, uh, for instance, on a traffic light uh, where they do a study that then they make a determination that a traffic light is required. Uh, very often they will pay for the construction, but then municipality is responsible for the maintenance operation and maintenance of that traffic light forever. Right. But I don't know, you know, the kinds of things we're talking about. I don't know if there's similar programs for signs and painted crosswalks. I tend to doubt it, it uh, but I honestly don't know the answer to that question, but I, I'm feel pretty certain if, if a letter is sent to them, they're going to identify that. Yeah. Well, and the tech response program, Joe could call up and ask some questions and, and, you know, get some direction or, or maybe, maybe even get some direct assistance. Sure. I'll, I'll get the letter off this week. Uh, consider it done. Um, one other thing is, is remember, recall that there was a traffic study performed on bank street before COVID hit. So I'm guessing it, it was in February, the last week of February, something did like that. that. The state did it. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, and according to Lori, the determination was that there wasn't, they, it didn't need a stop sign. And, and I'm not certain where that came into play because the discussion that, that instigated the request should not have been that there should have been a stop sign there. Anyway, so that's, there is that's that. That sounds to me like a, a study for traffic warrants 
uh, for some kind of vehicle control, which is typically stop signs and or traffic lights. And uh, I'm not 100% certain that that even considers pedestrian traffic. They, they typically look at where there have been automobile accidents and the incidence of that and frequency and whatnot. And that, well, that then determines whether or not warrants are met to warrant a stop sign. Okay, but at least we would be able to find the speed as well as the types of vehicles and the volume that occurred during that week. It was a five day process, right? Is that not important? Well, I think it is. And if they've done that, that puts them another step down the road towards completing the study. Okay. All right. Well, and, you know, I don't know what pedestrian traffic's like in February as opposed to, you know, July. Right. Some of those places, too. Um, so, anyway, um, the other the other uh, part of the course, the, the second Second part was um, active transportation, which again talked about um, walking, biking, um, mobility sources, um, you know, trying to make complete streets. In other words, trying to make room for cars, pedestrians, bikes, that type of thing. Um, kind of went through that whole process again, talking about trying to make, you know, um, improve the, the quality of life in, in communities. And, you know, states, states are taking that more, taking a harder look at that and being more responsible for, for, you know, making those kinds of decisions. I mean, they helped out with the bike lanes and stuff in downtown Pittsburgh. Um, there's another number of states that have, have done things like that, put in bike lanes, walking lanes, and, um, you know, cars and, and uh, traffic lanes. So um, again, it was a, it was a, a very um, informative uh, workshop. Um, again, it, I, I learned more about active transportation and, and these are things that, that are look, the states are looking at for future um, to improve future improvements for cities, municipalities, that type of thing, to make it more livable, improve the quality of life. So there are programs out there. There's probably funding out there through a variety of sources to help out with some of these things. And they, so they I think I would add, obviously, biking to the pedestrian. And Dale, did they have, by any chance, did they give you the title of the regulations or a, a specific title for a, a type of study that would be completed? I don't remember. Um, I'd have to go back through the, through the um, handouts. The, the yeah, the only reason I asked that question is if we're going to send a letter to PennDOT, I think we want to refer specifically to whatever their program and or required study is called by title. Yeah. So just I, use, their, use their vernacular, in other words. Right. 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 And I, I think some of that, some of that information was kind of um, in that, in the um, handouts in the um, program, kind of probably towards the end of it. I, I'd have to take a look at it. Great. I, you know, we sent, Justine sent this out. I can send it out again. Um, I know I sent it to Joe not too long ago, Joe Cower. So, okay. So that's, um, you know, it's. So Dale, let me ask with the, the summary of that conversation, what does that equate to by way of us having requests, potential requests for funding to council? Like on the, on the pedestrian side of things, does everybody concur that those five streets are the ones that we're interested in? Or are there things that we want to approach for streets that we actually own the maintenance for that we want to do in tandem? My, my concern with the PennDOT thing is just purely a timing one, right? If we send that letter, what are we looking at by way of timing? No wrong answer. It's going to take what it takes, but did it do anything to advance our 2021 budget requests? Well, you know, one of the things that, that, um, when, when I did the, the, the concept um, 
summary mm. for the for this the pedestrian safety. Uh, some of the things I, I was looking at was, you know, um, there's some simple things that that I think that can be done. Um, we should we should look at um, signage. You know, maybe look at mar some different markings for some crosswalks. Um, you know, maybe maybe we sit down and, and maybe as a form a subcommittee and, and try and identify some of the hotspots and provide that information for, for Joe, um, Joe Coward uh, to um, absorb and look at. And, and I mean, he's uh, Joe Coward. I presume that you have some, some ideas of what signage costs and, and what's involved with. You know, we're going to have a cost on the state roads. I know in the past where state highways with a speed limit under 40 miles per hour, the state kicks the signage responsibilities onto the town. So like Larry was saying earlier, where they'll put the traffic signal up, but you got to maintain it. Uh, I'm pretty confident that when it comes to these signage improvements, it's all going to be us because these roads are under 40 miles per hour. But that'll all get identified in the study they do. I think the study will maybe, you know, pro bono, like you say, but I, I bet you when it comes down to saying, Hey, these signs need to go up, it's probably going to be us. So that would be something that we need to, make sure council budgets accordingly so that these plans actually get implemented. Well, do we, do we actually think something would happen before next calendar year in terms of having an expenditure for signage or whatever? I mean, I don't know. I'm just asking the question. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't think we're going to have a study real quick out of PennDOT, but uh, I, I don't think it's unrealistic to ask council to just bump up the, the current light item we have now for street signage and those kind of improvements that can be rather rather quick and painless yeah i guess the beauty of that would be that when you do start talking to PennDOT, you say you can say hey we have a budget allocation mm -hmm. do some implementation we just need you to complete the recommendations i would agree i think that's a good idea yeah that'll certainly grease the skids Mm -hmm. Are there things on a smaller scale, I'll ask Dale, Justine, because you guys were, were most passionate about this issue. Not to say I wasn't, but you kind of spearheaded and pulled that together, Dale. Are there things on the crossroads that uh, we want to include in there? Or are we saying, let's look at these five and that that's the lion's share of it? Well, in my opinion, I think that I mean, do we have any idea how many crosswalks there are in Bridgeville? I mean, not, and, and how are they already identified? And can those crosswalks be improved? So, um, you know, every day, and, and Tim, your kids wait for the bus on Bank Street, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, crossing Bank Street, if you had to send your kids across Bank Street to get the bus, it's a dangerous, it's a dangerous situation. So, you know, if we can identify any crossroads within Bridgeville that needs attention paid to it, then I think that, that it's something that we should at least identify and justify for improvement, so. Yeah, I'm fully with you. I, I think the, like, you know, we're, we're earmarking the next couple of months specifically to put pen to paper on these requests. I, I'm, I'm in full alignment with what we're suggesting with the state at this point. I'm just saying, while well, the topic is open, are there other things that we want to include in that before we just say, okay, we've got a plan, let's move forward. Um, I'm, I'm not opposed to that. I'm not saying it's wrong, just while the topic no, is fresh. I think we need to identify those particular problems areas and whether, or, I mean, whether or not it is walking the streets of Bridgeville and trying to figure out, you know, what pedestrians are saying about crossing the sidewalk. What do the people at Goodwill Villa think about catching the bus on, on the other side of Bank Street when they have to cross the uh, Bank Street? So. You know, I think we need to figure out what's the problem and that's gonna just take time and somebody volunteering to, to talk to people or doing a query of residents here in Bridgeville. So um, I think we should identify everything up front as, as much as we can. 
what the issues are. Well, the, the other thing is, is, you know, there are some sidewalks that, that create some uh, challenges for trying to roll, roll strollers across or just trying to walk. Right. Because yeah, I guess what is the plan for that is I'm trying to move past concept to actual let's request money if, if the requests are out there. So, uh, again, I'm not I'm not in any way dis disagreeing with what's being said. I'm just saying specifically as much as we've said the next two months, this is the chance to put some specifics together, i.e. a business case or something that looks like that and says, here's what we're asking for. So to your point, Justine, it, maybe it's a subcommittee meeting outside of here. I don't know, but who who's who's walking the streets? Who's talking the good vote? Bill? What does that look like? I guess we need to be okay. All right. sharper on the. I think that I'll I'll look at it. I mean, I I will spend a couple of days and look at it, mull it over, and then you know get back and figure out what I think needs to be done. Yeah, uh, Joe. Are there others? I'm. I'm. That sounds great to me. I, I'm wondering, you know, from calls that come into the borough, do we have a file of places that, you know, we've heard four, five, six requests for sidewalks? I'm. I'm throwing stuff at the wall, but I'm just curious. Are there other sources for this stuff that we could quickly pull together and say there might be a couple thousand dollars here that we could do something with? I usually get complaints about you know sidewalks at various properties and there's public works work orders. We could ask the road foreman. That may be a good place to start. You know, the other I thing, think, go ahead. I think sidewalks are the responsibility of the homeowner. Correct. Or the property owner. Yeah, I think the, the, there's two issues here uh, to your point, Tim. And obviously the one is identification of the streets that we're talking about that are perceived to have a problem. But the second piece of that is these studies that uh, PennDOT has the guidance uh, on that are required to be performed. Uh, are there qualifications of the personnel that are performing those studies? So in other words, does it require, for instance, a traffic study, which would have to be prepared by a traffic engineer, in which case you now have outside help that you need, or yeah. Are just mostly uh, items uh, that a I use the, the, the characterization a trained observer could could perform, uh, but you're not required to have any particular certifications or education in. I mean, to me, that's that's the bigger question. I mean, it would be great, you know, once you have the list, if it's the kind of thing that that uh, typical planning commission member could perform, if you will, but if it requires some professional assistance, obviously that's different. And I don't know the answer to that question. I've not looked at one of those studies. I've not looked at those guidelines. Uh, Joe Coward, do you have any input? No, I'm by the same thoughts as Larry. Okay. I guess that's probably what we ought to try to resolve for the next meeting at least is you know, what are the elements of a pedestrian study? Uh, which of those elements can be performed by, you know, let's just say the planning commission members and which elements would require outside assistance. So we can then, you know, put some budget numbers uh, to mm -hmm. that. I'll find that out for you. I'll report back. Um, one, of the, one of the first things that the group said at our July 2nd meeting was that every community should have an active transportation plan for safety and accessibility of the community. And, and that was pretty much the next 100 slides that they talked about. So, you know, maybe we want to think about actually doing a formal active transportation plan or are we already talking that? Does that all fall into what I we're think, I think we're talking about one small piece of an overall transportation plan. I mean, so I, what is in a transportation uh, for pedestrian safety? What would you consider? Well, a, a pedestrian safety, in my mind, is one small piece of an overall transportation plan. And that would, okay. that would involve all the traffic controls for vehicular traffic uh, and so on. So Okay. Yeah, the, the, I mean, 
putting together an active transportation plan, I mean, they look at networks for, you know, where people work, where people play, uh, live, shop, you know, schools, um, bike lanes, um, that type of thing. Um, and so it's, you know, um, maybe that's something, you know, the, the, the transport, creating a, an active transportation plan is, you know, creating some sort of vision for the planning and, and you know, involvement and corrections and implementation. Um, and, you know, maybe, maybe this is a, you know, we'll, we'll look at, you know, some of the, the pedestrian stuff now, but maybe that active transportation plan is something that we look at you know, start looking at now and, and put in as part of our next five-year plan or eight-year plan or 10-year plan. I think a piece of that is, is all on what you uh, perceive your problems to be. And I'm sitting here thinking about, I remember the issue on Cook School Road a couple of years back, you know, in a development in St. Clair and the issues and all the controversy that that created at the time. You know, had there been a transportation plan in place that could have addressed that, you know, maybe that whole process would have been a lot less painful for the borough, you know? Yeah. Uh, and as I think about that, uh, Justine, I'm thinking Cook School Road. Yeah. Might be one we need to look at for a pedestrian safety plan. I, I can't imagine people walk up and down that road, but, you know, they may well. Oh yeah, hey, the people are forced to go 15 miles an hour because of the speed bumps. So that's a good thing. <laughs> well, that's that's Ridge Road. That's not Cook School. I mean, Cook School runs from the park, you know, from the park down to uh, Bower Hill and right. out, out to um, um, McMillan, Clair, right? Upper St. Clair. Right. Um, can I? One of the things, Joe, that you sent out shortly after you started was a <coughs> Allegheny County opportunity for, for funding for uh, safety features or walking features or healthy features for communities. And it was grant money but from Fitzgerald, right? Rich, Rich, Rich Fitzgerald. Can you see that that maybe uh, if we if we sort of pick a particular road like McLaughlin Road and say that we want to feature that as a pedestrian slash biking avenue to McL the new McLaughlin Park? Could that be something that that? we could sort of mix into what we're thinking about? Are you talking about an actual project that has like an element of construction or are you talking about a plan? No, uh, it, just fleshing out a plan that we could get grant money for to say, we need to actually can do a study to see how feasible it is to bike from Main Street in Bridgeville to McLaughlin Park. I think the whole comprehensive pedestrian safety plan could be addressed by that. If we look, if you looked at that attachment I sent you back then about that active Allegheny grant, yeah. it yeah. showed a number of towns of what they got money for. And there was a right. number of towns that did get money for, you know, active transportation plans such as this. So maybe we just uh, put a grant application together for that type of planning effort. If that's what right. the body wants uh, to do, I can recommend to council and we can run with it. The deadline's not till November and it's a rolling basis. So right. I'm as good right now. And it would be a nice project. I, I'd mm -hmm. like to do either or. I wouldn't mind, even if like you said, if you had something along the lines with some type of biking feature, if it's like painting sharrows on the road or something like that, maybe, maybe we can apply for along those lines. But if it's something just a plan, uh, they funded those activities in the past as well. Okay. Well, I think trying to look at it, developing a plan is, is a good start. Um, but, you know, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm looking, looking at the, the commission, planning commission here for, you know, some ideas of where we actually want to go with this. I mean, we want to look at signage. Do we want to look at having some money for signage for marking existing crosswalks for now and, and you know, work on a plan? 
I think it's be a, a shot in the dark. I have no idea how we would come up with a budget amount until we know what it is that we need to do. I mean, it would just be a cat swing and guess, right? I mean, well, there's a number of crosswalks that don't have signage in town, and and that may that may help with some of uh, some of the issues at least initially. Yeah, but I don't think you want to start putting signs up before your study's completed. How are you going to know it's the right sign? Meet the requirements. I mean, there are a lot of issues there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we're going to do something, and particularly for you know, and, and again, I guess I'm kind of focused on the pen dot roads. Uh, we want to make damn certain we do it according to oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and again, I, you know, I mean, it's you know, the borough's been the one that's been marking the crosswalk. So I mean. The borough has some responsibility in this. Yeah, they were out painting. Was it last week I saw them out? Of course, that was just yellow, uh, no parking curbs. But I imagine they're going to do crosswalks. I mean, yeah, they're already done. Okay. But it is happening, and it's lunacy. There's a massive cost for all. Yeah, I think the the move forward approach of submit our letter to Penn Dot, see what kind of reaction we get. In the meantime, if you know, Joe's able to contextualize that with, hey, we'd like to get a feel for how much of this stuff is going to require outside expertise, consultants, whatever, as opposed to where do we as borough residents or planning commission specifically have the ability to do some of that insight and analysis. Um, and I know, Joe, you said you take that as a, a report back between now and next meeting. I think that would give us a decent idea of whether we need to get a foot in the, the budget for some sort of external outside help or whether it's just us to to Justine's point of starting to walk the roads, talk to citizens, see what the buzz is. Um, I think worst, worst case, you know, we get to September, October and just say, Hey, we're, we're pursuing a couple of things, but add the line item um, or increase it by X percentage. And when we have good reasons to distribute it, we will. Joe, what is the uh, budget line item for signage in a borough? Do you know off the top of your head? Yeah, it's not much. It's about two thousand dollars. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's not much. it's not much at all. Yeah, I was thinking that we can make a recommendation for some dollar amount, and truthfully, the amount in the back of my head was ten thousand. So that might be a pretty big lift for council to increase it that much. Well, so. I mean, you can always ask for more, and and you know they'll decide what what's reasonable. Well, and it's just an allocation. I don't. I don't. Personally, I don't perceive it as an actual commitment to spend it all. It's, again, the notion is when you go to PennDOT, you can tell them we have an, uh, an allocation uh, without a firm commitment until some studies are completed. Uh, I'm not sure if that concept flies or not, but it's you know something to think about. Okay. Um. Another thought is is developing a subcommittee to, to look into this a little bit more, look at some of the, the intersections and issues. Um, Justine and I would we'd be happy to, to start that process. And, and Mike, I had a Mike Tomer, I had a conversation with him last week, and he's willing to help out. So maybe we'll we'll start walking around town a little bit, looking at, at sidewalks, looking at intersections, and and. Uh, so now have a sit down with Joe Cower and, and go from there. Yeah, Dale, if you could, and I'm not committing, but if you could let us know when you're scheduling, whether it's a, a walkthrough or a meeting or whatever, give us a couple of days heads up. If I'm available, I'll do my best to get there. I just can't tell you that I'm going to have a lot of time, but I'm willing to, you know, at least give it a go if I know sure. when you're meeting. Absolutely. Okay. Anything else with regarding pedestrian safety at this point? I want to try and keep moving here and we've got another issue to address. Dick, you got anything? Nope. Okay. Um, under new business. Hey, Dale, real quick, the other the other big item under old business was the comprehensive plan. We don't we don't have to beat it up too much. I think where we left that last time was Joe was going to start to put a skeleton together of a particular a, a potential RFP, maybe talk to a couple of other boroughs and get recommendations from somebody that might be a, a good vendor in that space. Any updates on that side of things? 
Yeah, I have an update. Uh, I did talk to the state. I do have a list of all uh, planners that have done work in the area. So uh, we have a good list of uh, who to go to for getting for proposals. I did start a draft RFP. I'm probably about a little over half done. So give me a couple more weeks and I should have that done. But uh, okay. at least know who to go to. And uh, when I have the draft done, I'll get it to everyone. I know Larry said that he'd help me just polish it up a little bit. Awesome. Yeah, I saw your go by. Uh what three four weeks ago and if you want to share something even part way finished uh joe you know please do uh, i don't mind looking at things when they're halfway complete or whatever so okay sure uh, if thing. you're willing to share it share it i'll give you some comments all right i'll get you something very soon great any sense joe for like ballpark costs on that i think we estimated that at like 35 to 55 but that was a kind of a shot in the dark I, I honestly don't know. I, I'll be up front with you. Uh, the one I worked on 10 years ago was a multi-municipal plan between Carnegie, Heidelberg, and Scott, and it was 102000 So, And that was over good. a period of years, was it not? It was about two years, and it also did updates to the zoning ordinance. So mm. the number may be skewed, but it was 102. But and that, got, did that, that had multi-municipal participation, so it wasn't paid for by one uh, borough or township, right? No, and that's what made it easy to get grant money for it. We ended up getting uh, DCD money and then money from local government academy. So if we do go multi-municipal, I, I already talked to the fellow at the state about getting grant money assistance to help with the comp plan. But he basically said, unless it wasn't, if it's multi-municipal, the odds of getting grant money are very good. If it's by ourselves, we're on low on the totem pole. Okay. So we, we sort of danced around that issue at the last meeting and really didn't talk about it in any, any level of detail. I um, mean, there's a piece of me that thinks we need to really focus within the borough, but there's another piece of me that thinks, you know, that we're not really an island. So, I mean, we should reach out to a degree, uh, but that would involve us with Collier, St. Clair. South uh, Fayette. Yeah, a little bit of South Fayette, and, but, uh, I'm not sure how interested any of them would be. Collier might be more interested in St. Clair, and I don't know that it would involve, you know, extensive pieces of their municipalities. Uh, but it probably couldn't hurt to at least ask the question about their level of interest. Uh, I don't know if we'd want to try to scope it before we did that or inquire about their level of interest first. Uh, you think about it, the biggest issue we've got, the flooding, we know where that originates. You know. uh, so uh, does it make sense to try to involve them in, in, in at least that piece of it? Mm. Uh, if, especially if it greases the skids on the grant side of things, maybe it's a conversation that they're more willing to have. Yeah, may, well, it, it would grease the skids on the grant side for us. I'm not so sure they'd be interested in that. I think they would have other issues and concerns about what it meant to them, you know, from a long term, I'll use the term liability, not so much in terms of mm. legal liability, but, you know, just liability for what's going on. Uh, so they might be a bit skittish, but I, I think, and I'd like to hear some discussion on this, and it, it, it can't hurt to ask the question. I, I would what? kind of would think that Collier would be a would make a good plan just because of our issues with the North Gateway. Right, the traffic but, issues are shared, and that would be a really nice transportation plan that we, we need to work multi municipally with. And we may need to focus strictly on transportation to make that piece of it. So, in terms, you know, of a multi municipal thing, only that piece would be multi municipal, and the rest could be focused. I don't know how that works at the end of the day. Uh, but similar, similarly, we would have the same kind of a discussion with uh, St. Clair. Uh, transportation to a degree, uh, and obviously stormwater and flooding is more important. So there would be two clear issues there. Hey, if I might, uh, I'm sorry to speak out of turn, but Joe, uh, Dawn's talking about it having a task force meeting in the near future too. So we could bring it up probably there. Okay. Who is that, Joe? Um, the president of their commissioners, Don uh, Zabicki William. Whose commissioners? Uh, Collier's. 
Okay. I was just on the Upper St. Clair website this week and their last comprehensive plan was established in 2015. So they just recently did it within the past five years. But I'm sure it'll be a while before they do something again. Well, you can bet that was community centric. Uh, they might Probably. be interested in looking at a couple of partial updates without doing a whole plan update. So, and Joe, I don't even know if that's that would meet uh, the discussion of a joint plan or not, where you're only looking at partial elements. Uh, I, I would think it could be, uh, Larry, you may remember the Scott Township one when it was oh, yeah. with, with Heidelberg and Carnegie. Scott Township was only involved just to be the bridge between the two of us. Right. They only focused on Glendale. So it didn't even really look at the entire township. So I, that's you're right. That's a good point. And that resulted in that ski streetscape program. It turned out pretty nice. So, yeah, so uh, it can be done. A lot of money came through because of that plan. And uh, our whole focus wasn't the entire township. It just was that one ward just to. So I, I think bridge. the trick, Joe, is is when we talk to either St. Clair or or Collier is to talk to them about pieces that we think would interest them and that they could see that they could, quote unquote, benefit from. So I, I think that's going to be easier lift and car than it's going to be in St. Clair, but I still think we ought to give it a go. Yeah. And I'll working, yeah. sorry, Joe, I was going to say working backwards, like, uh, so in order to get something in front of the, budget folks on council, when do we need to have that RFP out? Do you have an idea of how many weeks we need to issue that thing? Is it four weeks? So we're talking beginning of September or what's, what's thoughts on the timing of that? I think it totally changes everything. If it's a multi-municipal plan, I think we work to see if our neighbors are interested. If they're interested, we go to the state, see if we can get money. It takes time to see if we get the grant. You know, if we do get the grant, then we're follow their timeline. So this may mm. push us a year, but it's probably worth it because one, you get the grant money Two, you know, they kind of like coach you the entire time. They have mm. planning consultants and then it solves these issues that are more than just Bridgeville. That, that's really our issues for more than just Bridgeville anymore. It may be worth going that route. It's definitely worth it on the finance side. No doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if we can get some kind of a budget number from any of those firms that you got the names of for just a feel for the uh, cost of a comprehensive plan, including the elements we've talked about. And, you know, again, look at this as a two or a three year process. And if we can get a budget, some kind of an estimate, you know, without a firm commitment, but something we can plan towards, maybe we can, you know, get something into the budget for next year. Again, it's it's not an obligation to spend, but it is a dollar amount that's set aside that if we can get this thing moving quickly enough, uh, there will be some some ability to move it forward. For yeah. the I don't know, Joe, if you think that, uh, I mean, uh, there's some firms that will be happy to give you a number if you can talk to two or three of them and get, get some kind of a sense. Yeah. Uh, others will say, well, you know, they don't want to tell you much or they're afraid of committing or whatever, you know. Yeah, uh, I, I think I know a guy. I'll ask. Okay. Well, you know, at least if we get, you know, some sort of idea for a placeholder to, right. to start um, start the situation, start the plan moving forward, I think is kind of the way to go. We're going to be on the hook for something. So there is a budget commitment. The grant won't pay for all. Right. But, right. right. What was the percentage you got in that in Scott and in Heidelberg and I think back then it was 80 20. 80 percent. They paid 80 percent. We were oh. up 20 percent. Wow, so that's it, pretty good. It was yeah, it was real good. Mm. I don't know what it's like now. And then we were able to get local government academy grant to pick up our 20 percent. So it can be done, but you just have to give me some time. What you call leverage in the system. <laughs> That's what it's all about. It's how to get stuff done. So, okay. Anything else regarding the comp plan? 
No. Okay. Moving on to new business. Um, Joe, you want to give us a highlight here for? Uh, it's rather it's rather short. Uh, the, there's a borough ordinance that prohibits the keeping of chickens within the borough. Uh, last month, uh, there was a complaint about someone having chickens, so they got an ordinance violation notice to say, you know, you can't have them anymore. Uh, that citizen went to borough council at the last council meeting under public comment and expressed a desire for council to amend that ordinance to allow the keeping of chickens because urban agriculture is now uh, a trend and a lot of towns are doing it now and we should consider that. Uh, council agreed that it, it does warrant a discussion and recommended uh, a past a motion to recommend to the planning commission that you guys study it, give them their thoughts. If you're for it, maybe give them uh, recommendations of, hey, these are what we'd like to see or no, we don't, we don't think it's a good idea. And that's really the entire story. Okay. And you were kind enough to send out some examples of, of ordinances. Uh, the, the planning commission have feelings one way or the other, or leanings. A couple of questions to, to start with. It, so Joe, you just said this, I wanted to underscore it though. The borough's current approach is not allowed, right? Because in that in that conversation with that woman, it sounded like she was asking for some consideration for, you know, the restrictions on the lot size. Maybe I just got lost in the details, but is the current borough stand no foul? Correct. No. Okay. Okay. And then she was given recommendations that, oh, maybe if you did have it, the, uh, the pen should be 20 feet from a property line and along those lines. Okay. As zoning officer, you get... Um any direction for us? I've only had one complaint on it so far. And uh, uh, speaking loosely, uh, it was two houses on one street had it. And a legitimate complaint came in where the chickens were not kept in a pen and they were running through the yard between the house in the middle. And the house in the middle is trying to sell their house. And they didn't think it was very good that they could sell their house when they got chickens running through their yards from the neighbors. So it is really a valid that. concern, Absolutely. and that's what brought this up. I understand it's a valid concern. And, and, yeah. Um, so you get it. You know, some people live in the country so that they can have that, and some people move to the suburbs so that they don't have it. So yeah. it needs to be done right if we do do it. What's the, the planning commission's feeling? Can I ask one other question first? Sure. With, with a lot of the ordinances, the example ones that were sent out, there's noise considerations, smell considerations. How are those things, Joe, is it just a complaint basis? How, how do you determine whether somebody's exceeded the noise or the smell regulations? Some of those more subjective things feel like it sounds good to put in writing, but it's going to come down to the actual situation and who's complaining the loudest. Like, what's the, what's the borough's approach to mitigating those sorts of, he said, she said. I think noise would be treated the same as that you do a barking dog. Usually that's defined after a period of time, not just I heard him bark twice. It was loud. It needs to be consecutive. Yeah. I think we all know the noise is a cock crow at dawn, right? <laughs> a right. lot of people don't want to hear that. <laughs> well, it seemed almost universal that it was chickens only, no roosters, which yeah. uh, right. tip, of, tip of my hand, I'm all for. That makes a ton of sense to me and as close quarters as some of us live. You know, they, they all limited the number of chickens. Um, they all pretty much had spelled out what the enforcement was. Um, you know, I kind of just kind of ran down and made some, some notes about some of this stuff. Um, they all didn't, uh, didn't allow roosters. Um, you know, commercial, you know, are you selling the eggs or are you just using it for personal consumption? Um, you know, there was one of them, Sharpsburg, I think it was, that allowed people to sell their eggs, um, but everybody else was, you know, not what they're non-commercial. Um, you know, they all had uh, they all had definitions of, you know, what a what a coop was, what a run was, what a pen was, you know, that type of thing, which laid them out pretty good. Um, you know, they all all required enclosures. 
and you know some of them spelled out what the enclosures were <clears throat> pretty pretty um, definitely, and others were kind of vague. Um, so I was, you know a couple of them really laid out the design the design standards for the the coop and the hen and the pen and and how far you know the the borough needs to figure out you know how close he can be to the property line. Um, that type of thing. Um, I would tend to think that if you're not creating some kind of a nuisance situation, I wouldn't be adverse to allowing it. Uh, I think that speaks to the controls. Uh, but just generally, uh, I wouldn't view it as a negative. Uh, but again, you don't want to you don't want to allow any kind of a nuisance condition to arise or continue. Right. Does it introduce any sorts of new costs to the borough that would make a you know license with an associated fee or if, if there's nothing there other than addressing complaints in the odd times that that comes up? That was one question because it, it looked like a lot of them had, you know, you have to have a, a application approved, notarized from the homeowner or if you're a renter, it's a double notarization, whatever. I don't know that I care so much about a permit personally, well, but if there are costs associated for the borough, it might make sense to offset that somehow. Yeah, all three of them, all three of them talked about fees. Yeah, I think a permit, Tim, would be appropriate and annually renewable. That gives you some degree of control, so the situation does get out of hand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you just don't issue the permit, and it has to go away. Yeah. You don't have to be crazy with the fees and be reasonable with what it is you're regulating, but, you know, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be some level of cost and administration and periodic checking, uh, but I don't think it would be, you know, an absorbent amount of money. You know, well, what I think it'd be, I think it'd be awful to have people with chickens around here. And I think if they want to have chickens, they should do what you do with a dog and keep it in the house. Because <laughs> I, I sure don't want any chickens around here we had uh, our neighbor here had roosters a couple years ago and that was absolutely awful and i i sure don't want any stinking chickens around my house <laughs> well if they want to have chickens let them move to south bay at okay um, I do have two questions or two concerns. Okay. One is uh, the disposal of waste. And I forget which one specifically stated, which ordinance specifically stated how it was to be uh, disposed of. And then the other thing is too, is that it seems as if we do have an, an issue with rodents in Bridgeville. And you know, if there's going to be something that is um, attractive to rodents, you know, how, do, how, are, how is that controlled by the chicken owner? And how do good. we verify that, that they're taking control of it? It's a good question. Well, you know, <clears throat> um, all three of them address like composting and, and uh, or or disposal. Right. Um, you know the the permitting process. One of them had a, per, a annual permit. The other one it was three years. Um, one of them I didn't see any any type of of permitting process mentioned. Um, you know, I, I Joe, I, how do you how do you deal with rodents and Keep I have them in your owners. house. Yeah. Well, like, like Dixon, there's some dog owners in town that are awful and we're there because they don't clean up their waste. There's no difference. Is uh, there... Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Justine. No, I was just wondering, do we have an ordinance that would control that particular dog owner? And And, you know, if we're going to equate it to owning dogs and, and 
poop in the backyard. So is yeah, there some but, yes, Go but ahead. the process is slow and uh the quality of life for the neighbors, for instance, the one I'm thinking of is rather set back because that their neighbor doesn't really take care of their dogs. You know, you can't regulate behavior. Right. So you have good dog owners and you have bad dog owners and it's going to be the same way with chickens. Okay. And all it takes is one, one person they're screwed up for everyone. Okay. So where are we leaning here? I make a decision. Tim? Uh, with the appropriate controls in place, I think it brings us up to par with every one of our neighbors, as far as I understand, even including the city of Pittsburgh. Um, I'm okay with it if it's tightly, like if we take the best of several samples. Um, some things in those I'm crazy about. One of them allowed it, you know, in an existing garage. Uh, I feel like it should probably be a separate living something that you have specifically for chickens as opposed to just opening your garage and letting them run around in there. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm open to the potential. I guess I'm, I'm not a hard no at this point. And I agree with Tim. If we have the right controls that are not burdensome, then I'm for it. But we have to make sure that the rodents are active. Yeah, and I, I put the caveat in my comments. I'm, I'm moving my vote kind of in with Larry that the permitting makes a lot of sense as a point of control in order to keep, keep some controls in place. So that'd be one of my stipulations. Larry? Well, yeah, I'm kind of, in, I'm, I'm willing to look at it. Uh, I think with the right controls, uh, you know, we're not looking for people to have, I can't imagine we're talking one or more, one or two chickens at the most on any given property uh, and no roosters. So, you know, but, and again, as long as I'm more concerned with the, the nuisance aspects, whether it's odors, uh, Rodents. The thing about rodents is uh, Justine touched on compost, and you know, I know there are people that have compost piles that don't have chickens, and I know that's that's an attractive nuisance for rodents. So, uh, kind of brings up a completely different topic, honestly. But uh, again, it's all about uh, uh, controlling any potential nuisance issues, identifying those, and coming up with a mechanism to control them and control them in a manner that we don't have the issue that Joe alluded to with the dog, that it you know, just takes forever. I mean, uh, and since you raised that issue, Joe, and it's just another animal as opposed to a chicken, is there something we should be looking at with dogs? I mean, if it's that bad. There was discussion by borough council that maybe we should regulate the number of dogs that you, that you have. Uh, that's the only thing I've been ever made aware of since I've been here. I can tell you this, the only dog I've had in the last 20 years sat in my yard and barked one afternoon and the police called me down off the roof of my house to put it in. <laughs> that dog didn't, that dog was gone within a week. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Getting back to chickens here. Do we want to make a recommendation that, that, um, they, uh, the, Make a, I, I don't know what we need to do here, Joe. Do we need to actually come up with an ordinance? Is that something the the um, solicitor does? Um, yeah, I, I don't think we're expecting you guys to have a final answer tonight. I think if anything for tonight would be, do you support it or you don't support it? And if you did support it, uh, maybe we could have the borough solicitor start drafting a draft uh, uh, ordinance that we would bring back the planning commission that we can get your input off and polish it and get from there. Yeah, that makes that makes sense to me. Yeah, it makes sense to me as well. Yeah. If it's worth calling out a couple, you know, have to haves for those of us who are open to the approach, I think permitting needs to be part of the structure for sure. For me, I'm I'm interested in you know non-commercial personal use only. So I don't want right. the eggs 
four dollars a dozen signs all over the corners. Um, so, smell so, and noise, obviously. Right. So, do we need a motion, Joe, for this? Uh, that that's your call. I think maybe to just keep this formal, maybe a motion if you support uh, further studying it and, and drafting an ordinance. That way, uh, uh, Mr. Decklaw can be heard and actually put his his opinion on record, and then we can move forward. And then, if you guys do approve recommending proceeding with it. Uh, We'll get with pro council and they would authorize a solution prepare an ordinance and that takes time and this one obviously will have more, more intricacies than other things and we could have that draft ordinance take a little bit longer than usual and we'll come back to you guys for your input if you want to see something changed similar to what tim was saying if it was drafted just to allow them in a garage it may be a good catch why we do have a planning commission for stuff like that so i, I think taking our time on this is, is the right thing to do yeah. Okay. I, I think there's enough interest here to, to um, look at it and move, for, move forward with, with it. I think uh, following up on Tim's comment, uh, I mean, we don't want chickens running wild. So I think some kind of a fenced in enclosure at the very least. Well, and I, you know, I think some combination of the three, three um, examples that Joe sent out um, would be a good start. You know, they all require pens. They all require coops. Um, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, how do you fit a, if you fit a coop in on a small lot, you know, there's, there's structure requirements that are already set um, in the borough. Uh, you know, that may cross some of these, some of these issues out too. But, Okay, any further discussion on chickens? Yeah, just one thought that just occurred to me, Dale, and this is probably a little bit out there, uh, but based on this discussion, uh, would we want people with chickens to get the approval of their next door neighbors, for instance, as part of this process? That's a pretty controversial concept, but, you know. One of those, one of the examples um, said that. They had to had to. Oh, is that right? I don't think they had to get approval. I think they had to do a notification process for the surrounding. Um, yeah, that's that's a little different than getting approval. And yeah. you know, I, I'm sensitive to the people that next door that might be trying yeah, to sell yeah. their house, and somebody that's sees exactly a, right. Sees that's a exactly stinking right, chicken Larry. coop, and you know. I think so if you put a 50 foot setback on all sides of your lot, a minimum of 50 feet. I my, think that would- My lots are 50 foot wide, so. <laughs> I know. I think that's why he's you know, recommending. What, <laughs> what, this, what this brings back is that piece of garbage at, at, on the north side with all the cars, when that was approved, he was to have like 30 cars. He was not to have any storage and that just got way out of hand. And that's, you're gonna have the same thing with these chickens. You're, you're, you're just asking for problems. You could well be. Well, it, it's not could, it, it will be because people just t totally take advantage of it. And, and th the history with this burrow is that nobody gives a damn and they're just gonna let anybody do what they want and, and just look at that, that, that whatever he's supposed to be, car, you know, you got people like Pat de Blasio walking around wanting to buy land on St. Clair Street so that the residents can park their cars because this guy's got cars parked all up the street and there's just gonna be no controls. You know, if you uh, allow three chickens, somebody's going to say, well, my wife has three and I have three and my kids each have three. So I got 15 chickens, but it, it's, I, I don't know. I think you're just asking for trouble. Okay. You, 
we we hear your comments, Dick, and and uh, appreciate the, and, the feedback. Seriously, and and I I definitely will get representation if we move to to push that. I mean, I, I'll I'll you know I'll, I'll agree to it if it's a fifty foot setback, but I, I I don't want chickens around here, and I got one neighbor here just you know look at their their house it, it you know i've been down in west virginia in the appalachian area and houses are nicer kept than than my neighbor here and nobody cares about it the borough you know for 30 whatever i've been here 35 or 40 years has never cared and you're going to have the same thing it's going to be worse with chickens yeah i think we all know who you're talking about at least i do Okay. Thank you. Let's try and wrap things up here. Joe, have we got any visitors to? Were we, Dale, going to take some sort of motion, though, to at least further explore? To give Dick a chance to go on record? Sure. Take a motion, Tim. I make a motion to continue to explore it, have the solicitor put together some potential language for us to consider keep the conversation I'll, open i'll second it okay yeah, hello there, there's a there's a mo hang on bob there there's a there's a motion here to to further explore have the solicitor look at it um and and look at potential language um any further discussion questions Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> I, I'll, I'm opposed, nay. Okay. <clears throat> okay, moving on to visitors. Bob? Helen, I'm, I, I don't, I'm not sure anyone can hear me. Yes, Bob, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks again for the opportunity. Uh, I was going to say, uh, you've talked about a lot of different subjects tonight. I was glad to hear you discuss uh, w w the primary problem of a community, which is uh, 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 renovating or redeveloping our central business district, because uh, that's primarily the tax revenue producing mechanism in the community. And for the past uh, several decades, as you, we all know, and you've heard me say a hundred times, 50% of the people in the area have been detouring around the Bridgeville South Head Business District because of the traffic. The, the, the suggestions made tonight, halfway through the meeting, were very encouraging. You're, you're exactly right. All the roads in the area lead to Bridgeville, but it's up to you guys, primarily on the Planning Commission, to devise a four community solution to the traffic congestion problem, which you already have. The, 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 the Bridgeville's problem is we're a two-lane main street through two four-lane highways. And what I say, and you're on the right track, but I think you have to try moving uh, more quickly, just in a couple of different ways. Now, you already have the plan, the, the specifics of it, as you know, are extending Shady Avenue 220 yards, adding two lanes to Washington Avenue from the Bar Hill Road intersection north to um, Collier, and that would require extending the railroad bridge. Yep. And uh, uh, what I would what I'd like to you to try is if, since the concept, uh, not the engineering details. Since the concept is there, why don't you contact some of the uh, companies that uh, Joe has been researching and ask them to give you a rough approximate estimate of, for example, what it would cost to acquire the land and extend City Avenue uh, 220 yards, what it would cost to put the two lanes from Bar Hill Road north, uh, what it would cost to do the railroad bridge. I've had a couple estimates on the railroad bridge, but not the other stuff. I think that would uh, that would give you a basis to 
to approach <clears throat> the other four communities through that traffic, uh, I forget what it's called, a uh, traffic task force, and, and ask them to support it. Uh, from talking to them uh, informally over the past several years, they'd probably love something like that. But it's got to come. It's got to primarily come from Bridgeville. Okay. I like to. I like to. And I like to mention. I like to mention one other thing to you, if right. I might. Uh, uh, there, I'm sorry. If someone wants to make a comment, please go ahead. No, go ahead, Bob. Uh, okay, I want to just mention one other possibility. <clears throat> I remember how <clears throat> the University of Pittsburgh School of Engineering did that. The tra that flood study, it, it was worth a quarter of a million dollars easily, <laughs> considering the number of hours they put in. Um, uh, f someone <laughs> that I know is a trustee at Carnegie Mellon University, and his name is Thomas McConomy. He, uh, he was the brother of a, one of my closest friends uh, who passed away about four or five years ago, Bert McConaughey, an attorney from Pittsburgh, who I sp we spent a lot of time together. At any rate, I think, I think the brother and I were pallbearers at Bert's funeral about four or five years ago. Okay. I was going to, uh, I'm sorry, I was going to ask Tom McConaughey to contact along with BJ as a relative, who's I think an instructor at CMU. <clears throat> and there's another person that I know who was their superstar student there three years ago in robotics, maybe we could persuade CMU with your approval, of course, to do a study. Maybe they'd do the same thing Pitt did for us relative to the uh, flooding thing. What do you think? I think it's up to the, the borough manager and the, the uh, council. All right. Well, you, you got, yeah, you guys are the brains of the community, man. I mean, you You'd have to rec if we can put something together. Uh, you'd have to approve. You'd have to recommend it to council. But what do you think of the attempt to do that? You know, we'll take it under consideration, Bob. All right, that's good. That's good enough. I'll. I'll. Uh, I, I've placed a couple. BJ and I talked to this. Talked about this a couple of weeks ago, and she gave me the name of the her cousin or relative, and I I forgot what it was. But uh, I'll uh, I'll try to contact her and see if we can put it together with some of uh, Tom. Oh, by the way, Tom McConaughey was the president of the Calgon Corporation. Matter of fact, I thought he was just the elected board president. I found out he owned the company, so I'm sure that he would have considerable influence if we could persuade him to uh, have that study done by CMU. Well, if we get some contact information, that'd be helpful, Bob. Okay, I'll keep uh, I'll keep uh, Dale. I'll keep you and uh, and Joe uh, uh, informed the best that I can. Okay, that'd be great. Okay, thank you. Yes, yeah, thanks, guys. Joe, is there Joe Cower? Is there anybody else? Any other visitors? Everyone's live right now, so if anyone would speak up. Okay, is there anybody else? Going once, going twice, going three times. Okay, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay, second. I'll second. Okay, any further discussion? Yeah, yeah. where do you go, you guys? See ya. Any, all in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, we're done. Thank you all very much.